Welcome to Rewind the Podcast. Welcome back to Rewind the Podcast. You've waited for it all week long. It is time for our hour-long political analysis of the Trump-Biden debate. Oh, 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 oh. Now, you were Team Trump. Why? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Thanks. You're funny today. I've been trying to. I, it, was, it was one line. Oh. Uh, thanks for the compliment, You're though. You're welcome. I know. Um, you, thank she's God. actually wearing purple because she's for both sides. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> and we will not have that slander here today. Amen. I am for one side, but I don't want to talk about it. We have bigger fish to fry. We have bigger Sabrina fish to fry. Sabrina Carpenter. Yes. Justin Timberlake. That part. Other stuff. Y'all know about the debate because you hopefully watched it. So we're not going to talk about all that because God. this is not a political podcast. We are not CNN, Fox News. Why do you keep putting me on the like not good side? She's a secret Republican. I'm really. When she gets those taxes out of her paycheck, she's like woke. Hawk to a. We need to talk about her. That's who we need to talk about. First I'm not a Republican. Also, I just want to make that known for the world. Black Republicans do not come um, in my DMs acting like I want to be a part of y'all society. They're like, we'll not. pay you a million dollars to talk at Turning Point USA. And she'll be like, guns are my friends. <laughs> black jobs. Black jobs. Black jobs. Can we talk about that, just that little yeah, piece? I love it. <laughs> my question is, is my job a black job because I'm black or is it a black job like already? And if I am in a black job, are the white jobs more? Because I need to be in the white job. That's the tea. But this is my question for all that as well. I feel like I don't feel it's the tea. I feel like that was said and there was some heavy undertone to racism. Mm -hmm. Heavy undertone. <laughs> Some underbelly. Yeah. Undertone to the racism. Yeah. I th it was given overtones. Because are we saying, <laughs> oh, we need more black jobs. We need more CEOs. We need more people in power. Oh, I see what you we mean. We need more veneer techs. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I am leaving this place. You are insane. What? No. Veneer tech. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who is that? Uh, those. Do you not know what a veneer tech? I is? do know what a veneer tech is. It feels is. like everybody is like veneers by vanity, and it's some girl in Atlanta, and it's she like is taking lash. people's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even know about that? I'm on TikTok. I'm on Black Twitter. Okay. Don't tell anybody. I don't say anything, but I admire. I love that. Yeah, okay. But, okay, here's the thing. We were gone last week. We hope you enjoyed the Mary-Kate and Ashley episode. They did because it was our, like, like fiercest episode so far. Oh, was it really? It was, like, our most viewed, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. Y'all love Mary-Kate and Ashley. The girls love Mary-Kate and Ashley. The girls the love world. the girls. The dolls love the divas, and the divas love the dolls. Yeah. So we're going to talk about what we missed last week um, because it was rapid fire. The one In week fact, we, we take, take off. What, normally, we're, like... What are we going to talk about? We're like scouring the internet. We're like, okay, we're going to take a week off. Like, I went home. I don't know what you was doing. I don't know what Gabe was doing. And <laughs> <laughs> I was just concerned about myself. And then it was like, all of this stuff happened in like four days. Oh, yeah. And I was like, well, at least we. It's like, Sabrina on tour. JT in jail. This and this. You know what? Let's just go Freaky down the Friday. list. Freaky Friday. Literally. Okay, let's start at the top. Sabrina Carpenter going on tour. Short and sweet. Yeah, we're not going. <laughs> Girl. Uh, please, unless please, we please literally fire Ticketmaster. That's what I'm mean. like. Unless we give Ticketmaster our firstborn child, we are not going. Mm -mm. Thoughts? Were you, did you try to get our tickets? Who tried to get our tickets? Miguel's? I think Kelsey. Our friend Kelsey, friend of the pod, hello. Well, Miguel said that she was in a queue of 17,000. Yeah. She said she immediately got in there. I got in the queue, and it was 8,000 people in front of me. Yeah. By the time I got there, there was nothing to be had. Okay. Um, but also, I don't understand the queues, because, like, let's shut it down if all the tickets are gone. Why are we continuing to wait in line for things that don't exist? Well, I will say, people will click, and then they'll act like they're going to buy, and then at the end, they're like, I don't have this money, and then they'll exit out, and the ticket will reappear later. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's just like, this is what pisses me off about Ticketmaster. Just... Give her the code, and if you don't have a code, you cannot go into it at all. Because people will get in the queue, and then at the end, when it's like you're next in line, oh, they'll say, give us your code. And then people don't have a code. Yeah, it's like, why are you trying to holler at the club when you can't even get in? Mm -hmm. Just don't come. Don't mm. come. I knew you were about to make that weird. <laughs> I can feel that I'm about to. Okay, so I didn't understand that correctly. I thought 
Okay, so people who don't have a pre-sale code are getting tickets, getting to the end of the process, and then they're like, F, I don't have a pre-sale code. Mm -hmm. So then it's just like making the process longer. Yeah. Also, I feel like it is 2024. Why is this not resolved? Exactly. I also feel like, okay, I know that there's like levels to this, right? You play smaller venues, and then you do arenas, and then you do stadiums. Mm -hmm. I feel like she should have done a stadium tour. Hot take. Hot take. Sabrina Carpenter, if you're watching this, I love you so much, and I've listened to Please, Please, Please at nauseum. A stadium tour? I feel like she should have done a stadium tour. They were already arguing if she was big enough to do an arena tour, which clearly... She's definitely big enough to do an arena tour, clearly. Yeah. Also, I feel like after seeing what she did at Coachella and the crowds at Coachella, See. and then seeing how well she performed as an opener for Taylor... I get that we don't like to skip a step, but for the rest of us, like, no one's going to go to this car. Like, it's going to be so hard to get tickets for mm -hmm. this. It's going to be the hottest ticket in town. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, on one hand, it's like, sold out tour. It's going to be great. But, like, girl, get your bag. Because what's hot this summer might not be hot next summer. That's tea. And then you might be having a hard time selling out Jake and Jack's comedy club Burger down Shack. the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would get my money. I would love to sell out Jake and Jack. <laughs> Me too. We'll Jake and Jack. <laughs> would you come to a live podcast episode? Comment below. I love that. I do. I actually need to have your hand when I say this. Give me your hand. I have to share something with you. Oh, you have tickets. I will literally fight you. <laughs> Did you I get got a ticket to Serena Carmen. <laughs> Sorry. Did about you it. really? I did. Just one for yourself? No. I have a person. And uh, we may work together. And the, the, the district <laughs> game. I feel that if y'all could see Gabe. Hang on. Hold that face. <laughs> <laughs> Off camera. Give it. I am. There is no loyalty. <clears throat> what do you mean? In this place. So really? I How did was it Olivia Rodrigo? How was the Jonas Brothers? You've I been to plenty go, of concerts. I didn't concerts go to the Jonas Brothers. Because I bought your ticket. You took my ticket. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we go to a concert, you're low-key there. No? That's, no. That's what, what concert have we gone to that you weren't there? That I was not there? That you weren't invited to. Okay. I was going to say, because Dua Lipa was not there. You, you weren't there, I mean? yeah. Um, Y'all went to that Olivia Rodrigo. You were invited. I was not. Well, I did that. I was invited. I got four tickets. Okay, well, then that's not my problem. I didn't no. buy the tickets. The main point is Justin Timberlake's in jail. <laughs> you can't, like, see, now the vibe is off. Is the vibe off? Kicking him out. No, you can't kick me out because you're mad. Listen, I've got friends. I've got hoes in different areas. I'll just codes. say, karma's a bitch. Should have known <laughs> better. <laughs> and there, this will come back around to you. What's the karma? Hmm. What, Moving you? on along. Oh, now you want to move Justin it on. Justin Luann Timberlake. Is in jail. Well, he's <laughs> out of jail. Let's start with the fact that... <sighs> I have one thing to say. Cry me a river. I think he'll be fine. He's going to be fine. Well, it may ruin the tour. It may ruin the tour. What, what tour? tour? <laughs> the, the world, world tour. tour. I love how in our head... We've made it like it does sound like that. Yeah. He was probably hammered. He was like, the world's hard. I don't think he was that hammered. That's really? what people are saying. That mm -hmm. like he really wasn't that high or or was, really wasn't that drunk in the, the like dash cam mm -hmm. or when he got to the station. But I mean, that doesn't matter. Like if you're drinking and driving, I mean, everyone's been there, unfortunately, where you're like, mm, I had yeah. three beers. I'm probably a little bit over. It's that like in between because sometimes you can feel fine and still blow or whatever, but I don't think he blew at all. No, I think they just took him in. Uh, yeah, I think he, he, refused. he refused. He refused the the breathalyzer, yeah. which they said that cop um, was is like rain and terror all over the Hamptons, which that's an oxymoron. But they said that that it's like a new twenty three year old guy. He said he didn't know who he was. Do you think he knew who he was? No, I I mean the kids don't know. Yeah, um, but. They said he took him in, but like he's been just like that, like Ugh, cop, like mm -hmm. following the letter of the law. And I'm like, Mama, for what? For listen, literally for what? I, also, though, like they said that. Okay, this is my confusion. So you get pulled over, mm -hmm. you don't blow. T. Some oh. girls do. 
they take you in. That was nasty. I'm just saying. I would never. Okay. They take you in. You get. You go to the drunk take. You get put out. Where were all these reports coming from? He had this in his system and that in his system and this. Girl. I'm like, did they take his blood? No one took his blood. No one took his blood. Also, the thing that was going around, they were like, they found traces of Truvada. Yeah. Poppers. Ecstasy, ketamine, whatever they said there was in there. That was from, there's a Twitter called Pop Crave, which reports things. That was from Poo Crave, which is the parody account. And people were people, reporting that like yes, real news. They were like, like Truvada, Justin f***s. Like, I was so confused. I was like, okay, the natural next step. In this situation, would be you just the people come pick you up and you go home. Yeah. What 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 IV did they hook him up to? What blood was drawn <laughs> and sent to the PD lab well, to see what was in his system? I'm very much confused. I can resolve that. It was from Poo Crave. Okay. So it was fake news, but I will I mean, it was say funny. it was it was definitely funny. But the way people picked that up and made that a media outlet that just proves we need to open the schools. Yeah, I felt kind of bad a little bit. In that, like, th- like, people believe a lie so much faster than they believe the truth. Mm-hmm. And th- so that's, like, always going to be a thing. That's the tea. And that kind of sucks. I mean, there was, obviously, it's not true. So there was, like, yeah, people it's were, like. poo crave. It was just poo crave. Correct. But, I mean, here's the thing. At the end of the day, obviously, you're not supposed to drive <clears throat> mm-hmm. under the influence, even if it's one drink. But as we've learned from that chick angel, it only takes one margarita. Mm-hmm. And you open your lips. Mm-hmm. So don't drive if that's the case, That's too. true. All I have to say is. All that stuff with Justin Timberlake, it was a little freaky, if you ask me. <laughs> Did you miss me? No, not even a oh little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay, fine. Freaky Friday 2 has been I announced. I am so excited. Yes, for which Lindsay this. Lohan did they cast? Wait. Lindsay Lohan or Lindsay Lohan? Wait. From The Parent Trap. I'm very, that's a horrible joke. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I'm call, I was trying to call back to our own content. I loved that. We have fans now. Okay. Um, I'm so excited. Seeing her and Jamie Lee together, mm-hmm. it just warmed my heart. Jamie I Lecartis. love the like, nostalgia of it all. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see like how they're going to take the story. I'm a little concerned because like, how many Freaky Fridays does a person really need? Mm. But yeah, I'm happy for Lindsay too. It's yeah. nice that she's on the up and up. She's on the up and up. She's having her Lohanna sance, as they would say. Oh, yes. She did a she did a Netflix movie, then some Hallmark movies, and now she's doing the big screen again. Yeah, I love that for her. Jamie Lee Curtis. She's welcome. This they're mm-hmm. bringing all the, like the original cast back: the brother, the grandfather. Oh, um, really? I wonder if Chad's gonna be on. He he already confirmed oh, he's gonna be good. on. The band is gonna be in there. Oh. So apparently, the working story right now is that she is uh, married but divorced. Okay. She's She's divorced. (laughs) She's married but divorced. That sounds like uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin. (laughs) Conscious (laughs) Conscious uncoupling. uncoupling. (laughs) But um, uh, she has a daughter, Mm -hmm. and she just can't get along with her or whatever. And it sounds like she may get married again. I'm like, we don't need the exact same plot. That's what I'm saying. Where are we going with this? (laughs) Literally. But our producer, Gabe, told us before we started that they said it's going to be freakier than ever before. (laughs) That's giving. That's giving Lindsay Lohan's back door sluts nine. Yes. Like Freaky Friday too. And this time, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's never had a sex tape though, right? No. Okay. No, she's the one who had that scandal about the list. She made in rehab. Do you remember that? No. She made like a. Lindsay, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm reporting what's happened. So uh, during one of her rehab stints, during the time when we were mm-hmm. like Lindsay Lohan, what's wrong with her? She made a list of people. Apparently, she had. Um, Allegedly slept with. Okay. Um, this is what the article was saying. Mm. And it was like, there were people in there like Ashton Kutcher, Adam Levine, like huge, like big yeah. names. Well, duh. And like the leak got list because it was taken in a paparazzi photo. And so people were like, she's banging the leak all these got people. List. The leak got listed. <laughs> the list got leaked. Yes. I need to take my fish oil. But they apparently were like going after all these people. And then like if they saw Adam Levine out, they'd be like, you had sex with Lindsay Lohan. Talk about it. And it was like, first of all, it's nobody's business. Yeah. Second of all, it was it was kind of hot tea. But anyway, neither here nor there. That's not what Freaky Friday 2 is going to be about. Oh, so. I was like, how did we get here? Because I said she I said she had a, a sex tape, but we <laughs> really took a left turn. You were like getting glazed over the eyes. <laughs> so I was like, that's not the plot of the movie. But also, is that really tea, though? I feel like, of course, celebrities have sex with other celebrities. But yeah, but I think it was uh, it was like three columns. Uh, so. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly, secure the bag. It's like literally. Yeah, I mean, she bag. was like a, a the Hollywood it girl. Of course, she was, she was the it girl. She was out here doing her 
Dang Thizzle. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's well, we're super along. excited. Yes. For Freaky, Freaky Friday, Friday too. Invite us to the premiere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we should. Oh, well, there's a trailer. We have to review it. There's a trailer? When there oh, is. Oh, when there's a trailer. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, there's already a trailer? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. No, there yeah. isn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. Moving on along. Moving on along. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about um, Katy Perry for Sticky. Okay. Yes. Speaking of comebacks. Yes. Okay. I'm excited. The internet was not. I don't think that this was well planned. No. I think that Katy working with... Lukey McDukey mm-hmm. is a big problem. Mm-hmm. It's not giving girls girl. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like not, it's making me not want to support the project. Support the girl. Yeah. yeah. But she looks great. See, this is what I, I'm not. It's called Woman's World. The song is called Woman's World. Yeah. It, Katie, Catherine, do better. Yeah. So this is the thing about online discourse, which is we've known from Pooh Crave that it's not <laughs> you can <laughs> I'm so sick of Pooh Crave. You're really dumb. <laughs> as as you've clearly seen, but um somebody had said all this stuff about like that didn't really happen with Dr. Luke and everything. And I'm like, that's no. Either he did it or he didn't. He did or he didn't, but there's clearly enough controversy that it's like, what are you doing? And then some people say, oh, she's working with his camp, and that not necessarily it him, but it's exactly, matter. It, that's the team. It does. You shouldn't want to touch like, that with a ten foot pole. He didn't work with Harvey Weinstein, but he worked with the company. Well, mommy, yeah. he's still making the money. Yeah, and also like at this point, you don't need him. That's there the are so many. You're Katy Perry. Work with Max Martin. You pick anybody else. The, literally, Dr. Luke is Mac Martin's protege. Yeah, like work with Max Martin. Yeah, like we don't have to do this. But I will say this. This is gonna sound horrible. I well, first of all, the well, first clip, you know, before we speak. Yeah, I think before we speak. Okay, so the first clip she released mm-hmm. was that sexy, confident. She is heaven sent, so strong, so wise, or something like that. Yeah. And the internet lost its because they said it sucked. They said it sucked. They said it was AI. They said it was Chat GPT set to music. And I was like, well, that's funny. And then her production company, or the producer, whatever, her managers came out and said that it was, in fact, AI. And they were doing it as like a little joke, a little riz. But the internet sleuth said what she did was she put on those Nikes and ran right back to the studio. And was like, oh, <laughs> in the world. She came back facing, <laughs> faster than Drake and Kendrick and that beef. <laughs> it was overnight. We had a new song. We had a new song. She got Bonnie McKee in the studio. She said, right. <laughs> Write it down. No, but then the other one, it was like, she's a mother. And people still say it sounds like they're like doing a Black Friday at Kohl's, but. I, but isn't that kind of Katy Perry, though? I love Katy Perry. And I love here's her the too, thing. but she makes Old Navy commercial music. Okay, and, and not for you, like, and. Yeah, like, so, it's okay, but like, saying that it's like a, cult, it's like, yeah. It's a, yeah. That's and what, I'm going to listen to it, because here's one thing. Sometimes Old Navy music is bops. Yeah. And Katy Perry will give us bops. She'll yeah. give us 108 beats plus per minute. Yeah. And we're going to be at the baseball game watching the fireworks. Yeah, and she looks, she looked great. We'll see. Yeah. I'm not convinced that I'm going to be a part of this, but we'll see. I fear I am. Well, that's on brand. You don't care about women. All right, moving on along to the woman of the hour who probably needs to take a little vacation, Taylor Luann You love Smith. to tell her she needs to take a little vacation. She, I'm tired on her behalf. On her behalf, yes. She, Taylor, it's okay. It's, yeah. it's a tour. Oh, what is it over? It's So it's over in December. December? Mm-hmm. She's in London right now, and then she's got to do some other countries. Then she's Wait, are you are you being for real? I'm being very serious. It's over like December, like almost close to the new year. Because she's got to do, she's got to hit Canada. She's got to hit the rest of Europe. Mike back. Thank you so much. She's got to hit the rest of Europe. She's going to do three more dates here in the U.S. Because now she's got the Tortured Poets Department out. She's got to circle that up. People think she's going to announce another leg of the U.S. tour since she has the Tortured Poets Department. <laughs> you look tired on her behalf. But all of that to say, she said at one of the concerts, her last tour, her, she, the tour is actually ending in December. So people were like, oh, that's so sad. <laughs> 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 but also, people, Taylor Swift fans know, she's infamous for lying for fun. <laughs> so we might have Torture Poets Department Part 2 I Era's can't. Extended Edition, Taylor's version. I have never been so tired of an artist Mm -hmm. in all of my days. I, every time I see anything about the tour or her or that boyfriend, Mm -hmm. I, 
I'm about to block them. <laughs> I'm this close. It's just constant. Well, which brings us to our next topic Correct. that we missed while we were gone. Travis Kelsey went on stage for about 45 seconds and the internet lost their mind. It was before the Torture Poets Department. They do that little bit before she does I Can Do It With a Broken Heart. And she got up there and he came out with the other two dancers, one of them being Jan Ravnick, who was so fine. Anyways, and um, he got up there and the internet went wild. It was all over E. It was all over Access. It was all over all the, all the entertainment things. And it's creeped its way into Rewind the Podcast. I will say this. I, I watched it on TikTok, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that's cute." Yeah, that was it. That's a, that's all that's, I got. That's what we should have done. That's all I got. And people are like, "No, no, no! She never brings out her boyfriend. She never blah blah blah." This means it's so serious. It's not PR. She's not Gaylor. This means it's one hundred percent the truth. And I was like, "This is why she doesn't bring people out." I because you do all of this. I could, it could never be me. Mm-hmm. You know how many times Jay Z comes out during Beyonce concerts every day. And you go, woo! And then that's the end. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, so much of her persona is wrapped up in her relationships. So it's like... Somebody on the internet listening to this is getting a think piece together to tear you apart. It's right true. What is that bad? I thought that was... That wasn't tea. <clears throat> no, it's... The, no, because they're... The switch the narrative. Now you t- you say that any big Taylor Swift fan will tell you it's not about the relationships. What's it it's, about? It's about her getting the music industry together because they are against her. But that just started like five minutes ago. She's been doing this for fifteen years. I know, but you, I'm confused. Look between us, you're not allowed to talk about that because she doesn't want to talk about it. Anymore. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I say whatever, whatever the hell I want to say. Cause, oh, okay, cause, yes, on that little baby mic. We we pay for these mic. Well, you pay for them, <laughs> but we pay for these microphones and uh, cameras and lights. So yeah. I said what I said. Now add more to it before I take it back. But with that being said, I'm still not convinced. I don't trust him. Really, I do not trust him. Talk about it. It's giving. I'm gonna get you pregnant and take your money. It's giving Kelly Clarkson's husband. Oh, it's giving. Uh, it's giving. Sauce. I really love attention, and now I went from a, a a six to a ten, and I'm up billions, and my podcast is up billions, and everyone knows who I am, mm. and I think that this was a little bit more planned mm-hmm. than I think he saw an opportunity and capitalized. Not that she isn't. She uh, she's a wonderful woman, I and I, say, I'm sure. Do we not think she's smart enough to see that coming from my? No. I don't want to undermine her intelligence on the internet, but oh dang, yeah, I, I think I think, or do you after think she da- said pretty man want me. No, I think after dating a Nazi, it's nice to date the like the fun, the guy. American football guy. Mm. I think that like it was a it was a great move for her image wise too, PR wise because that Matt Healy thing was a disaster. That's the team. I think they, it worked out for both of them. And it could be coincidence or it could be like a really valid, healthy, happy relationship. I hope that it, that's what it is. They, yeah. pe- everyone deserves happiness. Everyone deserves happiness. And if you make that much money, you also deserve to serve a prenup. <laughs> I know. For real. You know what's so funny? Back in the day, I would be like, nobody needs pre- If you're in it for love, it doesn't matter. People are wilding out. And pe- wilding out with Nick Cannon. And the like happiness. like You have to think about people in their worst Mm-hmm. Most like vindictive, manipulative state, mm-hmm. not like the nice guy who came out on stage. Yeah, I hope Taylor just get you, get your money right, girl. Mm-hmm. Don't, Secure the bag. Don't uh, something about him just gives. It's giving Sam and Brittany. Yeah, it's giving just like, huh, mm-hmm. huh. Well, next week we're gonna update you with which Swifty has made voodoo dolls of me and Raven. <laughs> so um, that will be fun. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, so moving on along. Moving on along. Let's talk about this real quick. I had a pride set this past week because yeah! yeah, happy pride. Oh, well, uh, pride's over now. It's to the back. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's a tweet. Oh. <laughs> Even our producer went. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be um, excluded from this narrative. That's not true. I'm just gonna throw this picture up. She came to support me at Pride, <laughs> and it was very hot. And she said, "I'm tired of my being ally an ally. ship stops at about 93 degrees. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, that's true. I'm so sorry. LGBTQ pluses. Yes. But I got I to was, play. It was hot." I was tired. <laughs> but I got to play a set at the Nashville Pride, and it was so much fun. It was I did... so good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I did a Hillary Duff mega mix, 
And so um, it was so fun. I did a little dance. I did a little uh, with love dance. And this one came out to support. And that really meant a lot. You're welcome. Because I know you don't be getting out a lot. I don't. I was super excited for Pride. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like an important time to like support things like that. Mm-hmm. And Especially with that Supreme Court. Exactly. And I was like, okay, we're going to go and do... I was not mentally prepared for 98 degrees Mm -hmm. and not the Nick Lachey team. No, she would have been on fire for that. I, it was so hot. (laughs) I was sweating. Yeah. But I had the best time. Yeah. You were fantastic. Stop it. And we got to see friends and hang out. And it was, yeah, it was a magical day. It was a magical day. And we just, that's what you missed while we were on the pod. But Mm -hmm. it was hot. There's a lot. We have a lot more to talk about. No, I know. I'm Uh, saying like. Because yeah. we didn't get to talk about oh. it. Oh, just yo, yo, people just fell down. Who was that? Oh, heart. Talk about the end of Pride. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, no, Pride is all year long, even with these two little gay boys. Is that a here? No, I think you're just. There tweaking. is a fly in here. You're tweaking. What's happening? This is so chaotic. This is so chaotic. Everybody, oh, while Should you're in the frame. Dave? Yeah, while you're in the frame. No, come here. Okay, while so you're real in the quick. Frame. So, unfortunately, our um, former producer, Angelo. Is in jail. No, <laughs> he chose to pursue some other really cre- cool creative things. He's an amazing writer. He has a series called Trying Hard on YouTube. On YouTube. Please check it out. Please check it yes. out. And he'll do the linky links or whatever. Yeah, I'll do the linky link. It's a show. Uh, Angelo moved here from the Philippines, mm-hmm. and it was basically a show, not based on his life, but about a, a Philippine, no, immigrant. <laughs> I will let you Who's go gay ahead. and looking for love. Yeah, it's so good. Yes. But he is not going to be producing the podcast anymore. Yeah. So all so of we Angelo. wish him well. But we do have a new producer. We he do. is young and fabulous, and his we name want is y'all to meet Gabe. Get down here, girl. He's we want you to meet Gabe. So he will be producing Gabe with us. Gabe is from Finland. I, can I talk? Too. Hold on. Gabe is from Finland. He doesn't know English, and he's happy to be here. That's not true. Um, and he is currently in a thruple. Me and you. So none of that it was true. <laughs> okay, Gabe is a nurse full time, mm-hmm. um, and he is here to help us out and produce with us, and we're really excited to have him on the team. That's the tea. Here. Welcome. Gabe, take the mic. Do you have anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> Give it so back. he won't be on camera much? <laughs> <laughs> Gabe has a very small talking voice. I'm just going to fill you in on what he said don't, now. Don't tell the internet Gabe said the only thing that came to his mind when he thought that was make America great again. The blue eyes, blonde hair. You better get out of here. <laughs> So, yes, you welcome. Get out welcome of here. to Gabe. Welcome to Gabe. <laughs> All right, moving on along. So, yes. this is our resident sports moment. Oh. Blake, tell me, how do you feel about the new Lakers head coach, JJ Reddick? What are your thoughts? I think I think it was a great um, opportunity for him. I Correct. think he's been working very hard for a very long time. Oh, has he? He has. I think, Do- um, oh. you know, I think his his wife and kids are very excited, and um, I'm glad he moved away from uh, from coaching private golf lessons to oh. teaching basketball. If oh. Michael Jordan can do baseball and basketball, he can do golf and basketball. So I love that. Is he a golfer? Yeah, avid golfer. Oh, okay. He loves golf. He he also loves to go to the Texas Water Park Schlitterbahn. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about J.J. Abrams. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. I know. About. Okay, thank you. So the Lakers have a new head coach. Okay. He's a former player. The big deal is that he's never been a head coach before. Mm, he, of anything. No. Not the Little League. Not, no. And so everyone's like, how does a person who's never worked before, I mean, they should ask Donald Trump, but how does a Ooh. person who's never <laughs> Sorry, Gabe. Has, no Shot ex- fired. <laughs> <laughs> has no experience get this job? And the answer is LeBron James. LeBron that is James. LeBron James's team. I'm happy for JJ. I liked him. I've I've followed his career when he was playing basketball and not golf. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And I was excited to hear about it. I mean, at this point, when you have LeBron James as your franchise player, do you really... Yeah. Is the head coach that deep? Well, and I will say this. As someone who does not follow basketball avidly, Mm -hmm. as someone who is a former player, even though he's never coached before, do you think that qualifies him for the job? Mm -mm. Tell me why. Some... 
Because I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, some coaches were never players. I mean, coaching and playing are two completely different things. Okay. I mean, you have to be able to unite a team. You have to decide, you know, how everyone ticks. And just because you're good at dribble, dribble, shoot, shoot, does it mean you have the interpersonal skills to be a coach? I think he does. I actually think he's going to do well. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that that should be, like, the model. That's a good take. It reminds me of when I worked at Texas Roadhouse. Okay. And you could have a girl in the cute little booty shorts and the halter top, and she could serve that bar. She could run that bar like the Navy. Right. That doesn't mean you need to be a manager running all the hostesses, exactly. all the children, all the cooks. So that's a good that's a good takeaway. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Keeping it on the Lakers topic, Bronny James. Felt like shade. Was the 55th pick in the NBA draft. Correct. Mm -hmm. Tell me your thoughts. I did not realize it first. You think I could connect it. I did hear about this. That is LeBron James' son. <laughs> LeBron James. Bronny James. Bronny yeah. James. Yeah. Yes, that is his son. Great. Yes. Look, you have you, any more thoughts? <laughs> That's it. I well, I don't what well, uh, is it, it nepotism? It's very much nepotism. It's, nep it's big tism. Nep big Big tism, mm -hmm. big nepotism, because there's probably many people out in the United States of America who can play basketball maybe just as well or better, but do you think the opportunity was given to him because of who his dad is? 100%. T. So how do you feel about it? I feel, I don't have no feelings. Can I be honest? Yeah. I, if I was his son, mm -hmm. and I knew I was going to get drafted, mm -hmm. that's not bad. Um, sorry, my mind went to like Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, if I knew I was going to get drafted... <laughs> Pride's over. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't pick it up. Pride's over. Um, I don't think. Sorry. I don't think I'd want to be on my dad's team. Like I know you're gonna. I know by default that means like, oh, you're on the king's team. See, I know who's called the king, King James. Mm -hmm. But I just, I don't know. I think I'd is in the words of Gabriella from High School Musical Two. I gotta go my own way. Okay. And I think I'd want to be on like the the Alaskan. Oh, wow. Yeah. You really took a left turn. I think that if it were me, okay. I want to learn from the best. Mm -hmm. And if the best happens to be a family member, then that's just what it is. Yeah. But like I would want to, and I think it's But like would a, you want to play with the best? Yeah. Okay. I think like as a rookie, absolutely. I think it's a one, it's like a moment in history. This has never happened. A father and son have never played in the NBA at the same time. Mm -hmm. LeBron has made it very clear that he's been waiting for this moment and wanted this moment. This is his dream mm -hmm. coming to reality. And I think that it's gonna be good for Bronny to like have that experience to have his dad kind of usher him into the league, especially because LeBron James has never had a scandal. T. Never like he seems like a family guy. And like the NBA professional sports can get um CD. Yes. And I think it's good to like give him that example as like his best foot forward. But then it's also sad because we know that this is the end of LeBron James. LeBron's career and he's he gonna will, usher he, in. He will retire. The next king. The next king. I don't think Bronny's gonna be the king for a while, but yeah. But see, that's also the thing. This is why I wouldn't want to play with my dad. If you have a bad game, he's like, oh, you're grounded. No, we're teammates. No, but I'm still your dad. No, you know I don't think thing. he's gonna ground him. But yeah, I'm happy you for that three point goal. You're grounded. I'm happy for Bronny. I'm happy for LeBron. Yeah. I think that, you know, nepotism, pepotism. Mm hmm. I mean, Bronny don't need the money, but I do if think if Gracie it's Abrams can call her dad and say, "Get me on the Taylor Swift tour," Bronny can play with his. Mom. I feel the same way. That's the T. That's the T, and that's the sport. Wait, there was something else. Sport. Oh, we live in Tennessee, and the Vols won the baseball national championship. They did. Oh, Rocky Top. I don't know how. It goes. I don't either. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, can I, I say something. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Okay. <sighs> You are a huge Alabama fan. Roll Tide. When it comes to football, uh, since my family's from Texas and my nephew is now going to go to A&M, mm -hmm. I tend to root for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something about Tennessee that I do not like. There's a lot I don't like, but we <laughs> don't, don't have You have the have, history. We don't have time for it today. I'm going just through the basis. I'm out, outside in the glass looking in, and I'm like, I don't like what's going on here. Yeah. And I'm happy that they won the baseball championships. People are, who are actually on the team have worked for it the whole lives. Danny, who lives in uh, Clarksville, who thinks that, you know, he helped him get there. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. So I, I work with a, a boy, a little boy named Zeke, and he is a huge Tennessee Vols fan. So I'm, like, happy for my friends. Mm -hmm. 
um, who like haven't seen this in their lifetime because the Tennessee fans aren't used to winning. And so I'm happy that they get to have this moment. Yeah. So they, go. they gave that championship a little hot to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I thought you'd say that you were a Cowboys fan. No, I I mean, I the my family avid Cowboys fans. Kay. And you know what? I got to give them a lot of respect because it takes a lot of love to love somebody who can has not won in <laughs> many years. They were huge when we were kids though. Huge. Like Troy Emmett Aikman. Smith. <laughs> right? Wait, wait, wasn't it wasn't Emmett Smith on the Cowboys? Emmett Smith, yeah. yeah. And then we had a moment where T.O. joined mm -hmm. and everybody's like, we hate T.O. and things yeah. like that because he did the thing on the star when he wasn't on the team. Oh, you yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I do remember that. And, um, but then uh, we had Tony Romo for a while yeah, and everybody Tony, was like, yep. he's Loved the him. savior. And then he started dating Jessica Simpson and somehow that made him bad at football. Yeah. I don't know, but whatever. I, the thing about the Dallas Cowboys is I feel like they are such a huge brand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, it's like everyone was Cowboys fans. That's when they, I feel like the '90s was their like peak. Did they win a Super Bowl in the '90s? They Do won we know? like three or four. Well, we have we have clarification from Gabe on 1995, <laughs> but I think they won a few more. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like they were huge in the '90s, and it was like they're they've done such a great job branding yeah. the team and the tradition of it all. Mm -hmm. But uh, the realty as a little girl, mm -hmm. I didn't care about Emmett Smith or. Any of those people, I cared about the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. We love them. Yes, and did you watch the documentary? I did watch the documentary, all seven episodes. Mm. How about you? I did not make it through all seven, <laughs> but I saw enough. Yes. I Okay, so there, was, there used to be a show on TV about the DCC. Making the team. Exactly, and I loved mm -hmm. that show. Shout out CMT. Yes. Go CMT! Who, who, who? Uh. Um, and I was super excited to see them do a documentary. I was nervous that it wasn't going to like be as good mm -hmm. as the show, but it was because the show, we didn't really get to see the season. I think we, it stopped it after training camp. I think so. Like yeah. once you made the team, that was the end. And so the, this was like all through. This was the so, whole season. Yeah. So let's start with the coach, Kelly. Kelly. So Kelly is the coach of the DCC and she is a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I adore her. I love her no nonsense attitude. I love that she she's been the coach since '91. Mm -hmm. That's the year I was born. Mm -hmm. And she just is such a hard ass, but like also like leads with this like grace and like respect and this like she's just a fancy lady. Like she knows how to do the deed, but. She she knows how to, like, do the tea, mm -hmm. but she's also like, you won't disrespect me because I know my power. Exactly. And I like that. That stance. And she's taken this team into, like, the stratosphere mm -hmm. to where they're, like, global ambassadors. Mm -hmm. That's what she likes to call them. Global and ambassadors. I, I love her. Well, that's my thing, too, is, okay, the Dallas Cowboys don't have the best track record now. Yeah. But everyone still knows the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. 100%. Those cute little outfits. They're so everything. cute. Well, and this is my, so, like, the majority of what I watched and things like that, I like to kind of like pull it out because it's like, oh, it's like fun to watch people make the team, you see the mm -hmm. tears, you see all that kind of stuff. But it's interesting to me more just like, and I, they talk about some of it, just like the the themes kind of you see. Because mm -hmm. like there was the one, um, is it appropriate to say in, in Indian? Is she from India? I, I believe so, yeah. yeah. the There was that one Indian girl and mm -hmm. like I saw a lot of discourse also online. It's like, they, they don't have a lot of this and like, or like an Indian cheerleader. And so like when oh. they're like, do you want your Barbie? And she was oh, like, yeah. Oh, you know, like things like that. And I mean, granted it's a Barbie, but yeah. like, it's just like this, it's, you're not used to having a person of color in that regard. That's not, there were, I mean, that's not necessarily true. Well, tell me why. They, yeah. They've always had, I mean, there's obviously, there's more white women. There's typically more white women. But there are women of all shades mm -hmm. on the team and has been since, like, the 70s. All shades, but not all shapes. <laughs> Correct. Like, they had, like, even when they did, so at the end, they do this, like, alumni thing, and they bring all the cheerleaders in to do a halftime show. Mm -hmm. And, like, they were broken up into decades. So it was cheerleaders from the 60s all the way up to the current cheerleaders. And like even in like the late 60s, early 70s, there were black women and Asian women and like all of these different people. I think the Barbie thing wasn't great, but mm -hmm. I think that they've rarely have all white squads. Mm -hmm. 
do of course could it be more diverse yes they have a black girl on there now who wears her natural hair and she looks beautiful and i think they're tr like getting more hip to the times but i think they've done a pretty good job overall of including everyone yeah what was your favorite part of the show oh gosh there's so many favorite parts you watched all seven episodes i did i liked here okay so i liked the way that they set up the show mm -hmm. in that you have the rookies Mm -hmm. The girls who are just starting, you have the vets, and then you have the the experience from the girls who are no longer on the team. So Anna Kate, sister, and um, Kat, I think is her name. Mm -hmm. So like seeing like post DCC life and like how they were like, these girls are like traumatized. <laughs> but they like loved it. But yeah. I was like, are y'all okay? Yeah. Like get it together. Um, and then getting to see the behind the scenes of like the business of it all yeah. was cool. And there was, okay. I thought that there would be more like slander, no shade. Like I would kind of wanted to hear about like the dark side of DCC Yeah, and they would touch on things, but it wasn't like, but I think if you were filming the brand, there was probably, especially an NFL brand, there was probably very strict, like, oh, yeah. you will stay within these lanes. Exactly. But I like that you said that, too, because even, like, looking at the discourse online and stuff, and this goes for all NFL cheerleaders, they have to go through all that, that rigorous process. And, I mean, we saw it, too, on, like, making the team and things mm -hmm. like that. But the process, the the weight, the, the watching, all that kind of stuff. And these people are making less than, like, $15 an hour per game. Yeah. It's wild. Well, they have a game fee. Yeah. And then they have an hourly fee on top of the game fee. But both so of them they are were pennies. saying that like at the end of the season, you make about twenty five thousand dollars. Which really honestly though, five months of work. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like you said, for a job where you are a global ambassador, and I get that the football players mm -hmm. and the cheerleaders are doing two very different jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm a very aware, thank mm -hmm. you. I just feel like you are the most famous of the cheerleaders. Like, I live yeah. across the hall from somebody who's a Titans cheerleader, mm -hmm. and she is run ragged mm -hmm. with all the appearances, with everything they have to do. And that's a Titans cheerleader. No yeah. shade to the Titans, but you just, yeah. when you compare them to the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and just $25,000? I feel like, I and go back and They have to hold full-time jobs on top of that. I know. Well, that's a choice. Like I said, I think the way that it's presented, I do think they should make more money. Yeah. But I also think that, like... I don't know what their schedule is like during the week. I don't know if they have three practices a week or or if it's like an everyday commitment. They do have a practice rate. So you are always getting paid for your time. So I think that's good. I, I go back and forth. You do get paid. It's like I feel like the rate should be higher, but I feel like they're getting paid for all of their time. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're working for free. Yeah. And on top of like exposure, social media, like you are set up in a way that you can capitalize off of an organization. Pull a bachelor contestant, if you will. Exactly. So like, listen, I, I, I can't pick it for the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. That's the team. I feel like we should start with uh, uh, teachers, but <laughs> the, the, the real team. Yeah. So I, I we like, should pay the Dallas Cowboy <laughs> cheerleaders more. The teachers they can have their Amazon wish list. Seriously, but like, yeah, I mean, and they the girls seem to really love yeah the experience. There was a cute little girl who cheered at Alabama on there. She was cute. The real tea was Victoria. Tell me about it. Victoria's a legacy. Her mama was a DCC with Judy, who's the choreographer. And she struggled. She, like, had to take a year off because of an eating disorder and depression and all these things. Mm -hmm. She's back on the team. But it was just, she was the, like, one you were, like, supposed to root for, I mm -hmm. think. But it was just you so just like up and down. It just... I'm happy for her. She came out on the other side. She chose not to audition again. But... Overall, I was like, it was just one of those things. Is like, is this is an amazing opportunity, and you've already gotten to do it. Yeah, is it worth it to go back into the lion's den, metaphorically, Correct. after going through all of that? Especially when like they went to her. The saddest part is that they're at the end. They have these two racks up. Is and this you, a spoiler for me? Sure. Okay. And you put spoiler, spoiler. You put your uniform on whether you're going to audition again or whether you're not. And that's like the end. And she's basically saying to them, like, do you see me 
moving into a leadership role because I'm a fifth year because you, you get five years. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you could very well get cut next year. But like, you can get cut as a fifth year. And she was like, but I'm going to prove y'all wrong. She goes and puts her thing up and then she's like, I'm not coming back. <laughs> There's like, just not, actually, <laughs> just kidding. I like don't want to. But I did think that like, it's nice to see the process. And also these women work so hard and it shows that like two things can be true. You know, and it's nice to see women striving for something. Of course, there is a vanity piece to it, but these women yeah. are also doctors and shit, dentists yeah. and shit. So that's like, what I don't like. Sorry. No, go ahead. That's what I don't like about like the online discourse. It's the most misogynistic thing. You're auditioning to dance for the male gaze. But like you said, they're doctors, they're mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. they're PhD holders. Like two things can be true at once. You can be a woman who's slaying the game. Yeah. And you can also say, and I want to go shake my pom-poms figuratively really, and literally. And they're really good dancers. Yeah. Like they're, and they have to know all of these routines. And the coolest thing about DCC, and I don't know, I should have asked my home girl who, who used to be a Titans cheerleader, is that they play a song. Like there's no set schedule mm -hmm. so the dj will play a song and the dance leader has to know the song and the counts and pick a, a routine that matches the song i've seen something like that on tiktok not for the dallas cowboy cheerleaders but they were like it was it would like they would count to the beat and they'd mm -hmm. be like one two three four five six seven and you come in on four and they would and you would see them do it and then they would do it and if they matched it they'd be like ah! yeah yeah like, it was crazy yeah that's wild. So, like, it's like these, like, you have to be really smart and a really good performer. And it's it's just cool to see the process of such an iconic brand. Mm -hmm. And I, I give the documentary, like, an 8 out of 10. I thought it was really good. Yeah. It was nice to, like, it was, like, gave you a little bit of tea without being too salacious. Yeah. I, my only critique is it was very much long. Seven episodes. That's why I told you. You said, how many episodes did you watch? I'm like... That's a long time. I watched all seven because I was like to know stuff. Yeah. But it was long and it could have been done in five. Now I'll tell you which documentary I did watch that I just. I know. I am Sally Dion. <sighs> Can I be honest? What? The document. There were parts of that documentary that almost made me want to sob. I know, it was bad. Watching her, especially towards... The, well, they kind of started at the beginning, but at the end when like the, the camera cameras yeah. were there and she is having a... Episode. An episode. I don't know what to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, having an episode. That was really painful. That was so painful to watch. To watch somebody that when they take the stage, they have this power. They have this presence. Yeah. It is always a performance that is like five stars to sit there and they're having to put her on a mm -hmm. gurney because... Her body is and she's like fighting screaming her. and crying. I was like, I can't watch this. Literally, and it's it's just someone. And I mean, I feel like Celine in a way is like kind of like Dolly Parton. Like you don't really find somebody who doesn't like Celine Dion. Exactly. And if they do, they, they're the problem. They're, yeah. And so you just root for her, and she's saying, "If I need to get back on that stage, I'll crawl." And part of me is like, "Girl, don't do all that." That's what I meant by Celine. Like, we don't need you to do that. Yeah, and I'm and I say that in love. Like I would love to see Celine Dion again, but like this. this too much pressure. Yes. You don't have to do that, girl. You I'm, just stay at home. Yes. And what's crazy is when she was in the studio at that one, oh, spoilers, when she was in the studio at that one part mm -hmm. and she was just singing, I'm like, it's weird because she still has it. She does it, have it. It's, it's not just one of those not things. as strong. Yeah. And it's But she just, definitely still has it. The part that was sad is when she was saying because of the stiff person syndrome that she has. So the whole documentary, obviously, if you haven't watched it, it's about her experience of being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. Mm -hmm. It goes back many years. That was the tea that I was not prepared for. Yeah. I did not realize that even at the height of her career, she was having these symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they did a really good job of hiding it. Yeah. But like, I thought that this was <clears throat> a recent diagnosis, like a recent thing. But it seems like this has been going on for 10, 15 years. Where, yeah, 17 years where she's been experiencing what started as vocal spasms mm -hmm. and now has progressed into full body spasms. Because a lot of people online are saying it's because of the jab. Yeah, no, she's been, she, listen... I, there's a lot of things I didn't recognize, realize. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize her boys were so young. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, in my head, they were older yeah. than they are. Um, so that was sad. And I also, I mean, we have, we, there is another Celine Dion documentary, like documenting her rise yeah. to success. I was expecting more of that. I yeah, was not like expecting. story. Yes. Yeah. I was not expecting so much to be focused on like 
present day just now. Yeah. And, and, the and this is not even trying to be ugly or controversy. There was halfway through the documentary, I was like, oh, this is all we're going to talk, talk about. about. And that sounds so I know what you mean, say. though, yeah. But, like, I also thought it was the rise, but she's had a documentary like that, mm-hmm. like you said. And to see just the ins and outs, the part, for some reason, that just really got me, and it just gives me, this is going to sound bad, a, a moment of my own gratitude Mm -hmm. is when you saw her taking her medicine and it was like stacks Mm -hmm. of medicine everywhere just to be well. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds bad, but just it was a moment of gratitude. And I was like, this is one of the most powerful singers, people in the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it rains on the just and the unjust. Yeah. I, yeah, it was, it was good to hear her talk about it in her own words and see that she is doing as well as she can be doing at this point. Yeah. My other thing, and I know it's a documentary and it's a snapshot, but it doesn't seem like she has a lot of family around. Yeah. Well, because you remember the whole thing that happened with her sister. Yeah. So I was like, I, I, she has a great team and they seem really supportive and she has her kids, but like it doesn't seem like she has that. And I wonder if that was support. by choice. Yeah. I don't like, know. For the documentary. But she says she's like, I got 13 brothers and sisters. I know. I'm like, where is everybody at? <laughs> Literally. And why is it your doctor and your uh, driver holding your body up? Literally. I don't know. And like, I know she has an older son. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I. It was good to see her. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that she got to speak her piece. I don't want her to feel the pressure to tour or give yeah. anybody anything. Because there's already rumblings of a Las Vegas residency. Mm-hmm. But they said to her... and. I know they talked about like her trying to get her syndrome under control and things like that, and she's trying to get better and better every mm-hmm. day. But I also remember at the beginning, it, she was like, "It can be affected by like stress, light, sounds." The all entertainment the, industry is not all only of that. that overstimulation in the brain. Yes. So like she was because there's a point in the documentary where she's back in the studio for the first time in a long time, and she's going after it and she's doing a good job, and that's what causes her episode. And she asked the doctor, she was like, so you're telling me that because my brain got overstimulated doing what I love to do, that's what caused this? And he was like, unfortunately, yes. And she's like, so how am I supposed to get on stage? How am I supposed to, like, do this? What are y'all going to do? Put me on my back on stage? And he was like, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there, basically. And I just don't think that any job is worth that, especially when your kids are 12. Yeah, and that's the part that I respect Celine for, but also I'm like, we don't need all that. Yeah. Is she was born to perform. It's magic. And even when she's around her kids, she's like, how was your day today? (laughs) She didn't sound like Kermit the Frog, but um, I was trying to do Celine, it didn't work. But um, there's just always that. It just oozes out Mm -hmm. of her, and I just, I know that must really just hurt her. Yeah, and she looked her. hurt and she I admire her get up and go mm-hmm. and her enthusiasm to do what she loves, but at some point I think all of us, I mean, aging, all the mm-hmm. things like you have to be like I have to find something else to fill that yeah. part of my life. It just doesn't say it. from what we saw in that with her episode, it is not worth it. Yeah. I kind of look at her like I look at Britney Spears. It's like, yeah. people are like, but we need to come back. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> it's <laughs> not, not about us. I love being a fan. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is not about us. At all. So Not even a little bit. Now, if she was actually out there and she was still going through it and she's booking a tour and canceling and things like that, it'd be like, there needs to be a conversation. Mm-hmm. But that's not happening right now. Mm-hmm. So it's just, just be well. Just be well. Just be well. So we're sending all of our love and yes. light to Celine and her family. Celine, we, come on the pod. We love you. <laughs> Invite everybody on this podcast. If Celine Dion. I don't think Celine Dion. I can't even. The Can vision you imagine? <laughs> of Celine Dion sitting, sitting up right here. <laughs> Hello, I'm so excited to be here today. The way I would be like, hi. That would be so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where would we put her? Yeah. Right she, here. Yeah, she's tiny. She's a little lady. She can sit on my knee. I know. Sweet yeah. Celine. All right, cool. I'll sit on the floor. Seriously. It's Celine Dion. You will sit on the floor. Yes. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. I'm happy to 
to be back. Uh, yeah. It was nice taking a week off. I it feel felt like, like a month. It felt like I haven't seen y'all in forever. But it it, <laughs> the, it was like, it for a while, I mean, we've only been doing this since, what, March? Since March. And y'all have been so great with, like, yeah. commenting and supporting and sharing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It just has felt like such a rat race. And it's also nice to know that we can take a week off. Literally. That's what, because I've been, like, on pins and needles, like, we'll lose momentum and people yeah. won't, you know, will forget about us and don't, won't, you know, remember that we even have an episode coming out. T. So thank you. And it was for, our most popular. I know. So thank so y'all far. for like supporting and listening to it on all platforms and for letting us take a week off <laughs> and giving us the confidence that if we have to take a little bit of time that y'all will still be here. So we love you and we thank you for that. As Celine would say, thank you. Oh, did I get to tell you what I did when we had our week off? No. Did I tell you I'm going to be and I got to. No way! Yes! Yeah. I'm gonna be. Blake, what the f? <laughs> what? We're in a group text. <laughs> well, I did. Oh, um, shut yeah. up! That is my dream! <laughs> yeah, it was fun. So, with all that being said, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Rewind the Podcast. You will find out about what I just told her at a later time. But with that being said, thank you so much for listening. If you want to listen, if you want to listen, you want to listen, you check us out here on YouTube. <laughs> well, there's this thing called the internet, America online. No, you can listen to us on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you know what you like. I'm not going to tell you, but if you want to watch the podcast and look at our beautiful faces, you can watch us on YouTube. Remember to subscribe, comment, like things. And, um, yeah. Raven. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This has been such a treat. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at I am Raven Dawson. And I am chronically online. You can find me anywhere on social media at, at Blake Rackley. And if you want to follow the podcast, you can follow us at, at rewind.the.podcast. Anywhere there's social media. We will see you next week. Next week. Bye. Bye.